Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. O I A A A A A Ha, are you here? Invitations. Welcome back to another day of Papa Flemish Advent Calendar and it's nearly the last day. This is so sad but I'm also glad because this is just way too much work each and every year. So yeah, pretty glad when the time is over. We're going to take a look at a cute and a very very cute geometry problem today. But before we dive into the main video, don't forget to check out today's sponsor Riddle, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Check them out at the end of the video. Very good product for Mac and iOS users. Also 10% of all LED solar systems over on Stanmerge and also 10 to 15% of everything over my Teespring link shop. And now we are going to dive right in. So here we want to find out what the radius R of the inscribed semicircle right here is. And I came up with five different ways in total, but I'm only going to present two to you guys. So the quest for you is to find out a few more ways than the ones we are going to take a look at today. So it's going to be a little exercise to the reader, viewer, whatsoever. And now we're going to dive right in. Very cute geometry puzzle and I really like it. So um, notice we have a radius given. Okay, so the point right here is just the middle point of the semicircle and other than that we have side lengths of one. This right here is a very famous isosceles right triangle, namely the one that ripped Pythagoras as wide open back in the days. I think it was Papa Pythagoras. Namely, this right here is going to be square root of two as the hypotenuse. Okay, just using Papa Pythagoras, you're going to see that one squared plus one squared is going to give us two and then taking the square root is going to give us the hypotenuse. Okay, this is what we have up until now. How can we proceed to find the radius r? For this, I would like to split up this triangle into two other triangles. Namely, I'm going to connect the middle point, the center of the circle, with this very corner that we are going to have right here. How is this going to help, you might ask yourself. So at first I would like to take a look at the complete area of this whole triangle. So the complete area of this whole triangle is, okay, so for right triangles it's very easy to find the area. Namely, just imagine you are going to copy this whole triangle, you are going to turn it around, place it here, basically then the whole area of this thing is just the area of, well, basically a square in our case. So one times one is going to give you one as being the area of the whole square, but we duplicated the triangle. So to get to the area of the whole triangle, we are just going to divide the area by two, okay? Because it's half the area of the square. So the total area of this thing is going to be one half. So now I would like to split up this area a tiny little bit. We are going to get two areas out in our case, namely the area of this one and the area of this one. Adding both areas together gives us the total area of one half yet again. Now what's the area of this triangle? This is rather easy yet again because you see this right here is just the right triangle yet again. So we are going to copy this triangle, put it here and then we are going to end up with a rectangle. One times r is going to be the area of the rectangle, meaning half the area of the thing, namely r over 2 is hence going to be the area of this triangle. So we are done with the first area. Now what about the area of the second one? This sadly is not a right triangle at the moment, but we can make use of the height property. Namely the area of a triangle in general can be calculated by taking the um, by taking one side length, multiplying it with the height, which lies perpendicular to the side length, and then take everything by two. You can uh, find out the area pretty easily by taking or, or by copying this area or this triangle once again, putting it on the other side, cutting stuff up, and then you are basically done. I presented this a lot of times, for example, on my second channel when we discussed the Realschulabschlussprüfung. So yeah, take a look at that. Maybe the link is in the description. So what we need is some kind of height right here. And this height is really easy to find out because, well, if we have an interior semicircle or circle inscribed in a triangle, it's always um, tracing out the tangent, so the side of this triangle to the circle. Meaning if we get ourselves the radius r yet again here, it's going to be perpendicular to the side length. This is just something that happens when you take inscribed triangles. And well, that way we are going to have the height times the length right here divided by 2 giving us the area of this triangle. Namely, what we are going to add to r over 2 is nothing but r times the square root of 2 over 2. And now you might notice we have a common factor of r, meaning overall 1 half is hence nothing but r over 2. We have a common factor of r over 2 at that times, okay, um, 1 plus square root of 2. 
<laughs> so we have a common factor of two on both sides, or one half, so we can cancel this out, it's not equal to zero. Meaning if we were to divide both sides by one plus square root of two, which is obviously not equal to zero because square root of two is not equal to negative one, we are going to get overall that R times nothing but one over one plus square root of two. And we can expand numerator and denominator by, let me see what's a good uh, one, okay, square root of two minus one over square root of two minus one. We are going to get difference of squares down here, two minus one is going to give us one, leaving us with square root of two minus one overall. This is positive and hence we are done and this is all good and fine. So this has been the first method. I hope you did like this one. Next up comes a method which I find to be more elegant in my opinion. And for this one, we are going to split this triangle up yet again. We are going to go by the same arguments and drop the radius r perpendicular to the square root of two part right here. So now we got another triangle, okay? This triangle that we are going to have up here, we are going to take a look at. So once again, you might notice that this is going to be a right triangle, but it's also going to be an isosceles right triangle at that. Here's the reason for that. So we got a radius r yet again here, and what is the angle up here in this corner? Well, obviously we got 90 degrees here. This is an isosceles triangle, meaning those two angles need to be equal. So 90 de divided by two is going to give you 45 degrees. Let's say alpha is nothing but 45 degrees. Now 45 plus 90 is going to give us 135, meaning the other angle must also be alpha. So this is once again an isosceles right triangle that we are going to have up there. And good thing is we know what this side length is. This is nothing but R. And we also know what this side length is. I mean, the whole side length here is nothing but one. We are going to take away the radius R from here, meaning this side length is nothing but one minus R. And now we can just simply use power Pythagoras here. It's as easy as this. So meaning what we are going to do, we are going to get R squared plus R squared as being the um, the nut hypotenuses, okay, opposite and adjacent of, of those angles, being equal to one minus r squared. So that overall is equivalent to saying we have two r squared, being hence nothing but, okay, we are going to get one um, minus two r and then plus r squared. And now we can just, uh, so for r basically, let's bring everything to the one side and zero on the other side, meaning we're going to subtract r squared on both sides, go, giving us r squared and then plus two r, and then minus one is hence nothing but zero. And this just screams for the quadratic formula, meaning overall two values of r being hence nothing but, okay, we are going to get negative one plus minus the square root of, okay, one squared is going to be just one, one, and then negative and negative becomes positive one. Okay, so we are going to get overall um, negative one plus minus the square root of two. R is a side length, so in the Euclidean metric, it's defined to be positive. So if we were to take negative square root of two, we are going to get something like negative 2.4. So this branch doesn't count, so we need to take the positive branch, which is going to give us a positive value, meaning r is hence nothing but um, square root of two minus one. And those were the two ways. How many can you come up with? I hope you did enjoy this little video. But before you end uh, watching the video, don't forget to check out today's sponsor, Riddle, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. So at the moment I was able to try out PDF Expert for over a month at this point and I do not want to get rid of it anymore because I really was able to implement it into my workflow so nicely and it has a lot of positive sides to it that I do not find with other PDF editors. The award-winning PDF editor can be used on both Mac and iOS and its functionality is basically everything that you could imagine. You could edit and annotate PDFs. It's extremely fast on its feet and it has such smooth scrolling coming with it, which I really appreciate. It makes reading all PDF files, so book scans, so much easier than with a lot of other PDF editors. And I just love it. It's just really nice to work with. And the editing features are gut tier. You can edit pictures, you can delete them, you can extract the pictures to your PC. So if you want to get a graph from a maths PDF, for example, you just right click on it and drag it out to your PC. And it really does work wonders, it's really good. Other than that, the annotation features work really well. You can comment on the PDFs, you can cut out text, you can transform text, you can make it bold, italic, etc. Whatever you wish, change the form, you can do it with PDF Expert. 
One function that I also really like is the fact that you can crop pages and you can permutate them. So you can change the order of pages inside your PDF document, which comes in really handy for a lot of um, daily life situations that I'm dealing with actually. So if you find yourself in situations where you need to scramble the pages around, then PDF Expert is definitely the go-to choice for you. And one feature that makes PDF Expert one of my all-time favorite programs is that you can use keyboard shortcuts. I do not find this functionality with any other PDF editor that I tried out up until now, be it in Adobe Acrobat Reader or PDF Element Pro. This is something that's only uniquely available in PDF Expert and I really like it. You can find an overview of all the keyboard shortcuts on their website, by the way, so definitely make sure to check it out. Speaking of which, on their website you can obviously get yourself the premium sub subscription as well as using the links at the top of the description. And the best deal for the demographic on this channel is actually that you are going to get an education bonus. Meaning you are going to get 50% of the education edition of PDF Expert which makes this an absolutely great deal in my opinion. So if this feels like a something for you, make sure to check out the links at the top of the description. There you can find the links to uh, the Mac version and the iOS version. So you can use it on the go and also at home on your desktop basically. You can support the channel this way big time, so definitely make sure to check it out. And like mentioned before, you can get yourself the education edition, which is off by a huge amount. So it's definitely worth it. It's extremely fast and I highly appreciate it. So yeah, that's basically it. Thank you guys for watching. Up until the next video, I'm wishing you guys a flammable day. Check out Stemmage, blah, blah, blah. And here, yeah, have a flammable day. See ya tomorrow for the last advent calendar video. Quite excited for that actually. Ciao.